Twelve years ago, we moved into a very haunted apartment. For context, I will need to go further back in the timeline as my stepson was a huge component of the story. These stories about my stepson were related to me from my husband. I believe my stepson, as a child, was sensitive to ghosts, paranormal, and the etc. An incident happened when my stepson was a baby at another haunted apartment, where he woke up in the middle of the night crying like he was hurt in his crib. Husband and mom noticed three scratches on his back. Of course, this can be explained, yet husband insisted those scratches were not there prior to putting him to sleep. Another strange phenomenon as that almost every photo of my stepson had some orb near him. Once again, this can be explained, yet, there was photos of just his foot in the background, and a well-placed orb near his foot. No matter the location of the photo, 90% of the photos we had of him had these weird orbs in them. Now jumping back into 12 years ago, we found an apartment to rent. We had terrible credit, and the landlord gave us a chance. We were excited as the apartment was in a relatively decent part of town, and to be getting our own space as we had been living with my mom. One thing I remember when the landlord first showed us the apartment, he said that he had to do extensive renovations to the apartment as the previous tenants destroyed the place. In the first month, I started noticing small shadows from the two bedrooms out of the corner of my eyes. I chalked it up to just exhaustion because I had my then one-year-old son. Things grew more intense when I put my one-year-old down for a nap and decided to shower. I left the door open that led from the single bathroom to my bedroom, just in case my one-year-old woke up. As I was showering, I felt as though someone was watching me. When I opened my eyes, I see a black shadow run past the door. My one-year-old started crying hysterically. I quickly got out of the shower and looked around the house, convinced someone broke in. I checked the front door and everything was locked. A month or so passed from this incident. My two stepkids, seven and eight at the time, would come one day a week, and on some weekends. Their room was relatively unused. I started hearing their sliding wood closet doors knock and strange rotten egg smells coming from their room. I searched high and low for the source of the smell, but never found anything. My mother-in-law had stayed over a few times and would tease that the kids must have left an egg salad sandwich somewhere. My husband heard the knocking at some point, yet chalked it up to the air conditioning kicking on. One weekend, my husband was out of town for work and I was alone with all the kids. I had got them all to sleep and decided to stay up and watch some TV. I was laying on the couch when I happened to look up and see my stepson standing by the couch with his eyes closed. Immediately I realized he was sleepwalking, which happened from time to time. He started mumbling about an old scary man in the closet. I stupidly figured he was having a nightmare and guided him back to his bed. As I started to walk out of the room, my stepson sat up in bed and mumbled again. The old man in the closet is looking at me. I looked over to see the closet open and instantly got creeped out. Then my stepson said, he's going to knock. Then three quick knocks happened. Immediately the smell of rotten eggs got heavy in the room. I flicked the lights on and guided my son to my bedroom. I was freaking out internally because my stepdaughter was on the top bunk in that room sleeping, and I did not want to leave her alone. I got all kids into my bed and stayed up until I no longer could fight sleep. I'm not super religious, but I asked my mother advice on what to do. 
She said to pray over the rooms and get oil on my fingers and place crosses over each door frame. I did exactly what she told me. That night, I had a terrible nightmare that my mom was possessed. In the nightmare, she had died a gruesome death that I was made to watch. I woke up hysterically crying. I wanted nothing more to just be able to move, but it was not an option. After this, the activity in the apartment calmed. Yet, one new thing started happening. One night I woke up to my bed shaking. It felt as though someone had placed their knees against our mattress and was shaking it. As soon as I tried to wake up my husband to see if he felt it, it would immediately stop. This would happen on a weekly basis. For context, my one-year-old son slept in a toddler bed in front of our bed. One night, my one-year-old and I were up in the living room. My husband went to bed early as he had to go to work early the next day. He came out looking upset and said to stop allowing our one-year-old to come in the room because he was shaking the bed. I told him our son never went into the room. As soon as I finished that sentence, the glass cover to the entryway light which was right behind me, came crashing down. My husband stood there sleepily, trying to process everything. He finally was feeling and seeing the things I'd been dealing with. One day, a house nearby was for rent, and we moved out. We were at this apartment for less than a year. We never experienced anything like what we experienced in that apartment. Relief, because I was worried that whatever was in this place might attach itself to us. Sadly, my stepson passed away in 2019 due to a possible COVID issue. I had told him the story prior to his passing when he was in his teens, and he claimed to not remember the incident in the apartment. I believe fully he saw whatever entity was in that apartment. So I used to work as a security officer. I was asked to work a Saturday night shift at an old warehouse in Dudley. I turned up about 5 p.m. where the building was a huge brick warehouse with some makeshift offices at the front. I walked in, took the keys from the day officer, and locked the doors behind him. Everything seemed normal for a while. It was a bit creepy as the building was so old, but I was used to that. Around 1 a.m. I got a call from the warehouse manager. One of the night drivers had forgotten his paperwork and asked me to go into the office. Right at the back of the warehouse and collect it for him so he can come pick it up. I said fine and headed to the office. The warehouse was pitch black. I had a small flashlight, but only slightly lit my way. I walked through until I got to the office door, which was a huge metal sliding door. It made a screeching noise as I pulled it open. As I walked in, in front of me was the office fax machine, which was blinking, and the paperwork was printed out. I grabbed the paperwork, but as I turned around, I looked to the other end of the office and saw what I can only describe as a dark figure, hunched over, shivering. I could hear what sounded like breathing, but like if you were freezing cold. I stood there for about 30 seconds, motionless, staring at this figure. I turned back slowly and closed the door behind me rushing back to the front office where I locked the door and waited for the driver. An hour later, the driver collected his paperwork. For the rest of the night, I'd convinced myself it was just the dark playing tricks on me. But it didn't stop me from unlocking the office door or checking the cameras every few minutes. 5 a.m. turned up 
and I got a knock on the door from the day officer. I handed him the keys and expected him to come in, but he locked the door from the outside. I asked him if he was going in. He said he doesn't go inside when there's nobody else in, but sits in his car in the car park and waits. I said, that's a bit strange. He looked at me and asked me if I went anywhere else other than the security office. I told him that I went to the back office to get paperwork for a driver, not telling him about the other part. I'll never forget the look he gave me or what he said then. He looked me in the eyes and said, well then, you know why I don't go in there alone then. It gave me chills, but I shrugged it off and just said, okay then, and left for home. Safe to say, on the way home I called my office and requested not to go back there. This story takes place in 2007. My sister and future brother-in-law just had my nephew and moved into a rental home. The home was newer and located in a newer neighborhood. I was asked to babysit my nephew one evening. My sister and brother-in-law wanted to have their first evening out since baby had arrived, and I was happy to babysit. I came over and my sister went over some details and mentioned that she had a load of baby clothes in the dryer. She asked me if I had time to take out the clothes and fold them. And they left to enjoy their evening and 30 minutes after, I hear the dryer sound letting me know it was done drying. I scooped up my nephew and placed him in his crib. I went to the laundry room and took the clothes out and folded them. I placed all the clothes in a basket and placed the basket on the changing table. I took my sleeping nephew out of the crib and placed him inside his bassinet in the living room. I watched TV quietly for a while until I heard a loud bang come from the nursery. I peeked into the bassinet and my nephew was still sleeping soundly. I quietly made my way over to see what made the noise and opened the door to the nursery. The laundry basket I had placed on the changing table was now on the other side of the room on the floor, upside down. The neatly folded baby clothes looked as though they had been tossed around. I quickly picked up the basket and clothes and brought them back into the living room to refold them. I was confused by the whole situation, but didn't want to ruin my sister and brother-in-law's evening and decided just to not mention the incident. The rest of the evening went smoothly. A few moments went by and my sister asked if I could babysit for an evening again. I agreed and this time my mom joined my sister and brother-in-law as they were going to a casino. My nephew had been napping prior to their departure and my sister said he would need to be fed when he woke up. My nephew woke up 30 minutes after they had left, and I brought him to the kitchen and placed him in a chair as I prepared his bottle. Before I go on what happened next, my name is Angelina, yet everyone calls me Angie. My mother particularly used only my full name when I was in trouble or angry with me. All in all, it's rare to hear my full name being used. Suddenly. I hear my mom yelling angrily from what seemed like the nursery. Angelina, come here now! I yelled out, in just a second, I'm in the middle of making the baby's bottle. Then again I hear my mom call out, Angelina, come here now! But now sounding like she was in the master bedroom. Frustrated and confused, I yelled back, what is going on? One second. I picked up my nephew and went into the master bedroom talking on the way to what I assumed was my mom asking, what's going on? Why are you so upset? What happened? And walked in an empty room. I looked around and my mother was nowhere in the master bedroom. I looked in the nursery and empty as well. 
I looked throughout the rest of the home and eventually checked the driveway for cars and only saw my car. I came back inside and called my mom. I said, hey, did you guys come back and forget something? And my mom answered a confused no. Why? To which I responded, I just heard you a bit ago. You sounded upset. She responded, I don't know what you're talking about. We've been on the road for over 30 minutes now. My stomach immediately sank. Once again, I didn't want to ruin their evening and just told her it must have been the television, even though it was off the entire time. After I hung up, the doorbell immediately rang. My heart nearly jumped out of my chest, and I quickly walked to the door. I immediately almost opened the door without checking, thinking that my mom was just pulling a prank and she was going to be at the door. I paused for a moment and decided to look out the peephole. No one was outside. I opened the door to peek out to see if there was any cars in the driveway and still seeing only my car. I instantly got this overwhelming sense of dread. No one was visibly outside, and from where that house was located, you could clearly see the street in both directions. I never mentioned any of these incidents to my sister until she moved out of this rental home. As I was helping her move, I noticed that she had moved my nephew's crib into the master bedroom. I asked her why she had moved the crib into her room. What she told me was completely unexpected. She said around Halloween, she had bought a black light and had plugged it into the nursery room. The room instantly lit up with what she described as a huge concentrated stain in the middle of the room with handprints going up the walls. She immediately just felt very uncomfortable and moved the crib into her bedroom that night. I told her what had happened the first time I watched my nephew and she opened up that strange things were happening in the house and was the main reason she was moving. She was experiencing lights flickering in the home, the doorbell ringing and no one was at the front door, and hearing voices. She said the landlord offered to lower the rent if they signed a year lease. She said the landlord told her that she was having issues keeping tenants in the rental and that she was the only tenant who stayed the longest. She refused the offer and moved. I always wondered if anything happened in that home and I wish I did investigate the home further. I absolutely hate that whatever was in the home mimicked my mother's voice. In addition to this story, the author of the story told me this. My sister said that the land used to be almond orchards. She said a classmate was brutally murdered in the orchards in the late 1980s. The new housing development was built in the mid-2000s. Also, the town's cemetery is in close proximity to this neighborhood. Hearing all of this, I asked my sister why she chose that place. She said the home was newer and the rent was relatively low for a newer home and the first walk through the home was appealing. She didn't think of all the stuff mentioned above until after the creepy things started happening. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please give a like, leave a comment, and subscribe. Perhaps click the bell for notifications and remember, Hell is empty, and the devils are here.